All right, so if you have a lightning fast swing and you just feel like, man, everything is just, it's so quick that you can't really tell what's going on and, and it's hard to differentiate between a good shot and a bad shot, it's actually the right wrist and specifically this motion in the right wrist that's really causing a lot of problems. So let me get into that. So let's start with the backswing is a big part of the downswing. So when I rotate in the backswing, if I wanna be smooth in the downswing, what I have to do is I have to let my body turn and I'm gonna show you the right way to do this even if you're stiff as a board. But then when I get to the top of my swing, I'm gonna feel like my body starts to get a little weight shift to the left, my body starts to open up, and the hands don't rush down right away. Now as you're doing that, this right wrist is gonna bend. So as I shift to left, that right wrist bends, and it shallows out the club onto plane. All those great things that we wanna have happen. So the first key to it is, if we bend this right wrist right away in the backswing, None of that good stuff with the body that we just talked about happens. So if I take this right wrist and I just do this motion, just a little flick of the wrist, feels great because I can move this club really easily. All of a sudden, that club starts to move a long way and you can see I haven't hardly done anything with my body. I've barely moved at all. And before I know it, the club's way back here. And worse than that, when this right wrist flicks it back in, it gets sucked inside and then we end up getting steep in the downswing. If you've ever watched your swing on video, nearly every single player I've ever worked with, they always hated how that club gets sucked to the inside. This is gonna be the solution for that. Now, I can't just get rid of this right wrist bending. I have to replace it with something. So if I'm not gonna use that right wrist to bend in the backswing and get the club moving back, I have to use my body. Now, here's the, the mistake I always made, being super tight. When I tried to turn my body, and everybody told me don't, you know, st stable lower body, not a lot of hip turn, and you're just gonna rotate your chest. Well, heck, I can't rotate past here. I'm tight right now, right? So I, it was really difficult for me to get that big turn and not have that right wrist kind of flick back until I realized the right way to move the knees and the hips. You see, your feet should move in the golf swing. I know it's a crazy idea, but if you look at PGA Tour pros, every single one of them, their feet are gonna move substantially in the golf swing. So if I start to use these knees as a piston and go right knee, left knee, and just let my heels lift up off the ground, and then this one comes down and my left heel lifts off the ground. So just a very simple motion of right knee, left knee, and I start to do this, that gets my hips to rotate. And this really frees things up. Now that my hips are rotating, as I go to the top, all of a sudden, I can get in that big backswing position and I'm loose. You can see that I can talk very easily and all of a sudden I've got a 90 degree shoulder turn or more. So if we're gonna get rid of that right wrist flick that sucks the club inside and makes everything lightning fast because before I know it, I'm way up here, then we just have to learn to use the knees like that. So as I start to use those knees and get the, my body turning, now we'll see how this part of the backswing, look how my right wrist hasn't even started to bend at all. It's pretty flat. Now from there it gets really easy because now my body is rotating. As I start my downswing, what it's gonna be is a little opening of the body and a little weight shift to the left. And I'm gonna feel like at this point, my right hand turns back and I get as much of this as I can. It's called wrist extension or just knuckles back towards your elbow. I fully set my right wrist as I start my downswing. That allows me to set the club, shallows it out, gets great lag, has all these great angles. That's how you get the shaft lean and compress the heck out of the golf ball, hit it dead solid, hit the divot in front, all those things that you wanna have happen. So it starts off with the right wrist in the backswing, no set body turn. And then in the downswing, a little shift to the left as that right wrist bends. Now, there's an awesome device that I love, and the more I use it, the more I like it, that forces you to get that right wrist working the right way. Let me share it with you. All right, so this device I have on, it's kind of crazy looking. It looks almost like a little RoboCop or Terminator type thing here. Uh, but what it does is ingenious. So when you bend your wrist back like this, it has a little lever here and it starts to click like a ratchet. And now if I try to flip my wrist forward, I can't do it. It holds my right wrist back. So the more I click it, the farther it bends it back and then it just keeps it there. So this is a great device for many things, but let me go ahead and, and walk through how it's gonna help to smooth out your transition. So I take my normal grip on the golf club. I go to my normal address, and you can tighten this, adjust it however you want. I find it works a little better the tighter you get it. But then as I start to do my backswing, if I get that right wrist flick that I've been talking about, that makes my backswing lightning fast, listen to what happens. Right, you, you hear that snapping right away. 
I shouldn't hear that at all. If I use my knees and my body to rotate, look how you may hear one snap, probably not even any snaps as you do your backswing. It's not until you get up here and you start to finish your backswing and start that transition to the left that you hear the snaps. So let me do it real slow and I'll show you exactly how this should sound. So no snaps or maybe one to here. And then it's not till the top of the swing and the start of the downswing that I start to hear those clicks. All you do is pull this tab and it goes right back to neutral again. So let's go ahead and go super slow here. Good body turn. Now I'm snapping. As I shift to the left, I've shallowed it out. I've gotten this laid back position. This is what lag is. So to, to eliminate any confusion, smoothing out the downswing has the saving up that hit for the bottom and getting lag. This right wrist bending back, that's lag in the swing. So if I wanna have a really big amount of lag in the swing, I gotta set that wrist and it looks just like this. And then from there, I rotate through impact and it really gets me a ton of shaft lean. So you put on this device, no snaps early, get some snaps late, right? I know I've done it correct. Then I just rotate from there. Now the thing that I've loved about this device is the more I use it, the more I realize this one thing fixes four or five or six other things. I talked about how it smooths out your swing. Well, let's also talk about a little bit more about lag and forward shaft lane. So as this sets back now, it's locked in there. And most people want to throw with that right wrist right from the top and cast this club out. You see, I can't even really do that now this is locking my wrist back. So having that wrist locked back gets me in the shallower, bigger lag position. And then from there, I got to go ahead and rotate to bring this club forward. So if you haven't been opening your hips, a big reason for that is if you've been throwing with this right hand, all of a sudden this, this club gets thrown out. Now I don't have to rotate my hips. If I get this bent back, now I have to rotate my hips through contact to be able to get that club forward. What about standing up out of your posture? Well, you see, the thing is, the only way to reach the golf ball out of my posture is to really throw this right wrist and have it extended. If I was to bend that right wrist back and I'm out of my posture, I just can't reach the golf ball. So I have to stay in my posture now to be able to reach the golf ball with this precision impact on there. So opening your hips, more lag, smoother swing, more shaft lean, staying in your posture. It fixes a lot of that when you do this little practice swings and hit balls with this device. So once you get used to it, then you're gonna do the same thing with a full swing and you can just hit shots with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a swing here. Again, I'm gonna to try to get those snaps as late as I can in the back swing. There we go. Now I found that I'm not gonna get quite my full distance, but that's pretty good. It went 175 with an eight iron. I'm not gonna be much better than that. And actually, this is another great thing about it. When this right wrist is bent back, now you have so much shaft lane and the hands are in front, it takes loft off the club just like the pros and the ball goes farther. So even though I swung almost 10 miles an hour slower than normal, I hit that ball so solid and it was so compressed because of what my right wrist was doing, it still went 175 yards with an eight iron. So normally I would be hitting, that's about my normal eight iron distance, but a lot of times I'd be swinging almost 10 miles an hour faster to get that distance. Not with this precision impact and this wrist really locked back. Now, because I like this device so much, I've worked out a special deal for you. I've gotten you $20 off if you wanna buy your precision impact. All you have to do is use the link down below in the description or one of the cards that you see popping up here, you'll be able to go where you can purchase one of these. Now I got that $20 off. Mike's been great, he's the owner of Precision Impact, really great guy, super nice guy, and he gives us a little bit of a few dollars for making this video and for every one of these we sell, so it helps us to grow the channel too. Not only do you get a discount on the product, we get a little bit of a kickback from that, and you get a great training aid. So really just all around, just an awesome deal for everybody. Now, one thing that I wanna mention here is when you get this wrist bent back for the first time, remember, if you have been standing up out of your posture, which is nearly everybody, that can feel wildly different. You feel like with this wrist bent back, you can't figure out how to get to the ball. Now I have the perfect solution to that, and this video is called Knuckle Dragger. Now I'm gonna play a preview of that video here in one second, but it's gonna help you to get much closer to the ground, much more shaft lean, and now all of a sudden that you get this right wrist back, it starts to make sense. You be able to stay in your posture. The Knuckle Dragger video is perfect for that. So just click that card that pops up in your screen as you watch this preview, 
or also down below, the link down below in the description, and you can get instant access to that video. So with your precision impact, you do the drills that we talked about here, then you go over to the knuckle dragger. I mean, it's gonna be the best thing you can do. It's gonna iron out five, six, seven things in your swing. So best of luck, and I'll see you in the knuckle dragger video. I got an awesome video for you. This one is what I call knuckle dragger. And this is one of the best ones, one of the big missing pieces to players that are struggling to get more lag. Now, let's talk about when you lose lag, what's happening. A lot of times what's happening is as you make your downswing, if we're looking from this down the line view, what happens is my hips go toward the golf ball. They start to slide forward. My chest moves back away from this golf ball, so I'm getting farther away from the golf ball. And then all of a sudden, I cast, I flip, and I don't have a lot of lag there. Well, look how far my hands are away from the ground. Also notice when I get my hands closer to the ground, so as my hands get lower, then what happens is they also go forward more. So as I wanna have more lag, when you feel like your knuckles are dragging the ground, then that club is naturally gonna lag back behind and then you're gonna release that out in front. When your hands are far away from the ground, well, if I had all that lag, where would I be swinging? I'd be swinging a foot over top of the golf ball. So you have to kind of flip, release that lag early to just make contact with the golf ball at all. So having those knuckles feeling like they're scraping the ground is really gonna be a big key. Now, another piece to this, again, when I talked about having, losing that posture, your hips go forward you're gonna to wanna to feel like as those hands scrape the ground, your knuckles drag the ground.